I don't know if we're supposed to get rain or sun. It doesn't really matter. You know, I've often said, don't let the weather be your temperature for how you feel. It's always upon God and we rest upon the living Lord. Well, today is it, folks. After the service today, I am... Uh, I don't like the word retired. I came up with another one. I'm graduating. <laughs> the unfortunate side of that is I have no idea what I'm graduating to, but I trust that God has something for me. I really believe that in my heart of hearts. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to find out how the other half live. You know what I'm saying? Um, that really won't be possible until everything is boxed up. You know, that's always great. You have more stuff than you need. And my wife is a thrower, and I guess you probably realize I'm probably the hoarder. So uh, it is what it is. But I have stuff for my house, the house I grew up in that we we're going through. And believe it or not, we were able to go through the basement. That was a that was a big deal. I guess I I, I hope I'm not like my father. My father, when. Uh, well, he had passed and my mother went into a nursing home and that was going to be it, so we had to take care of the house. We spent a week in the basement, a full eight-hour day week. He had enough nails to build a house. He had, he had our toothbrushes from when we were children. Does it, do any of you remember Tony, where you could do a perm that was Tony? There were two sample boxes down in the basement. I have no idea what he was ever going to do with that. But it was fond memories. I met. I never met my grandfather. He passed away in uh, 45. He worked for the Reading Railroad. And he had two chests of tools down there. And in that way, I got to meet my grandfather. You know what I'm saying? I got to talk to him, so to speak, in some ways, not physical, folks, not physical. I got a chance to talk to my grandfather, who I did meet before he passed. And it was a joy, but I didn't get rid of that stuff. Some of that stuff had emotional pull to it. You ever have emotional pull? You know, you, you just want to hold on to it, and it's not really worth anything anyway? Well, if you're going through that with uh, your parents, be gentle with them. <laughs> Be gentle with them. Let us prepare ourselves for worship this morning as God meets us where we are.
I would like to uh, I'd like to begin by asking our mothers to stand. <coughs> I would like to add to that number those that care for the children in our church, that are reaching out and doing ministry to children in our church. Would you know it's stay oh, we used to, if you have the rest of us. But stay standing, don't sit down yet. Any other women who are doing ministry to our children and our youth in this church? You are spiritual mothers. And that includes you. Definitely. I don't mean to cause you pain here, but you're definitely a spiritual mother in this church. There are teachers. Do we have any school teachers here? You should be standing because you are mothers as well. You know, I used to chide when, the, when I heard it said it takes a village to raise a child, but I think it's true. I think it's true. Let me pray a blessing over you as I open in prayer. Oh, gracious God, bless each and every mother, biological, spiritual, or otherwise, God. Use them to touch the hearts and lives of children and youth today. That your kingdom may be furthered. That their lives may be fruitful, God. And that they may be good citizens and people of faith. In Jesus' name. You may be semi-seated. You can be seated. It's not going to be a long sit. That's all I'm just about to tell you. I also want to ask that God would move in the service. Gracious God, move in the service. May your Holy Spirit touch our hearts and lives as we walk down this path. May you give us grace and strength. May the fire of God burn deep within our souls. And may you use that to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. I know this is going to sound crazy as a statement, and then we'll do the call to worship. I'm not saying that the COVID disease was not a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. It is. But I saw something good that came out of it sideways, if you will. The saints got a chance to have a little rest. Okay? And I think it's stirring excitement in the souls of our people in the churches to get back to something normal and do something. You know what I'm saying? I've had the rest, I've got excitement, I've got some ideas, I wanna see some things happen, I think God's gonna be moving. Just step in the water with God, folks. Look for His ways, not your ways, His ways. Jump on board and see where God will take you. <coughs> I'm sorry, I just wanted to say that. Can we stand as we read the call to worship together? Come, let us worship God, our Savior. We desire to serve the Lord be saved, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Come, let us praise the one mediator between God and humanity. To Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our ransom for all. Let us sing our opening hymn, the Spirit Song.
seated. Wow. I want to read to you out of Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the the name of Jesus Christ. Then he asked. Then they asked him to remain for some days. Blessed be the word of God. I chose this text because I didn't want to interrupt Pentecost. Nor uh, a heart strangely warmed, but I thought Gentile Pentecost we can talk about. So we have special music today from our children's choir. Looking forward to our young cherubs singing their hearts out for God. Mother's Day present, huh? That's a nice Mother's Day present. How about the rest of you? 
Any other good news or prayer concerns? Do we have prayer concerns? Oops. Yes, the mayor. Yes. Um, I don't know if I'm speaking out of term here, but I just wanted to say what a joy and a blessing it's been to have you uh, here in this church and this church here in Prospect and uh, all the good, wonderful things you've done uh, for the community. I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm very proud to be in this community and be a leader of every everyone here who cares. Uh, all, all, of, all of you are a joy to me. And, uh, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here, and God bless you all. Okay, thank you. Are there other concerns? Yes, Terry. I have a joy and a concern. I thank everybody for their prayers for my brother. He ended up back in ICU. They thought he had a stroke after all the heart surgery. Now he's back in the regular room. He actually talked to my mom on the phone last night, so good news. Yes, thank you. praise God. Who knows what's going to happen out of this, you know? Okay, if we have no more prayers, let's take a few moments to pray. Oh, gracious God, I thank you for your love, your kindness. You answer our prayers. You walk with us when we grieve. You walk with us through childbirth. You touch us in the journey. And you promise us eternity with you. We rejoice in that. We rejoice in that. Lord, we praise you for this day. We thank you for mothers. And God, now we pray as we have been taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
series on revival is over? I guess not. But I will tell you, it's over after this week for sure, no matter what. Okay? That you can take to the bank. All right? As I was preparing for this week, I took a chorus or a, a, a song line that said, I hope I ne never get over what you've done. I hope I never get over what Jesus has done in my life. How about you? I hope I never, 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 never get over any of that. This comes from a song um, from Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. I don't know if I shared this with you or not. I, you know, I've talked to it twice now. And uh, on the NBC, the 23rd, some kind of talent contest they will be on. Uh, it's one of the best albums I've ever heard, period, in contemporary music. And the title of the song is The Million Little Miracles by Joe Barnes. And I was interested as he sang his song because he was testifying in the middle of the song of what God has done in his life. And isn't it great to know that God can release you from your sins and addictions? Isn't it fantastic to know that the fact that you had breakfast today, anywhere, is a gift of God? Did you know that? You think you learned it, put it on the table? No, I'm here to tell you it comes from God. All you have to do is not be able to work or not be able to something, and you'll see that real quick. God is with us always. I hope I never get over what you've done. We can struggle to remember and keep count of all the blessings of God. What a life adventure that would be. Think about this for a moment. Suppose you start today to write down the blessings of the Lord. Every day, as many as come to your mind and even some from the past. What do you think would happen in your life if you just wrote down the blessings of the Lord? I think we'd be ecstatic people, don't you? You see, God moves in our lives and loves us and motivates us then to, to love others. You understand what I'm saying? Revival, fan into flames, the gift God has given to you. And this is going to be a Mother's Day sermon. You know what that means? Believe it or not, it's going to be short. So whatever you want to do on Mother's Day, uh, it won't be my last sermon to say, boy, that guy just wouldn't shut up. <laughs> Not going to happen. God's love is poured out to the church and to the Gentile church. When I look at revival in the Bible, I think the day of Pentecost was a revival time. That Jesus was sharing the gospel with the Jews and anyone else that was within the community. The Spirit was poured out and, and three thousand people came to faith that day. Do you know that normally in Jerusalem there were not three thousand people? Do you know that there were people that were still there from the, the Passover? And I think about this Gen uh, Gentile Pentecost. If you really want to get the full flavor of this text, you've got to really start back in Acts chapter 9 and just read Acts 9 and 10. And you'll begin to understand what was happening there. Remember, I, I think I preached this to you, that a blanket was lowered with uh, food that the Jews would consider unclean. And uh, Peter was hungry, and the message came to him, kill and eat. And he said, God, I've never eaten anything unclean. And God said to him, don't call unclean what I call clean. Powerful message. Powerful. And the Holy Spirit just fell upon these people. Did you ever throw water on anyone as a child? I won't ask if you threw it on an adult as an adult. My college years, many of those things transpired quite readily. But I see the falling of the Holy Spirit like somebody throwing water up over the head of another person so that if they stand there, it's coming down right on them. 
The Holy Spirit fell upon this community as they were accepting the message, as they were open to this message, something was happening. Do you think they expected Pentecost to fall? Do you think the Jews said, okay, Pentecost is going to fall again. Let's, let's get ready. I don't think they expected any. It says, and the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. Hmm. I think they were a little caught off guard. How about you? I think they were caught off guard as to what was going on. And all of a sudden, because up until that point, it was a Jewish thing. You understand what I'm saying? There were Gentiles involved, but it was, it was really a Jewish thing. And maybe the Jewish community said, wow, God is starting a new temple or a new church. This is a Jewish thing. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is poured out and they might be just a little bit bewildered. And Peter says, for they were hearing them speak in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, ooh. They started to worship and praise God. Something happened to that group of people and they started to worship and praise God. How powerful is that? Come on, people. Uh, I, you know, I, I haven't seen much of that in my life. But could you imagine walking into church and it feels like somebody dumped a whole bunch of Holy Spirit on you? Woo! That's revival. That's all I can say. That's revival. And if that happens, and suppose we have visitors in the church, and all of a sudden they're excited, they're open and inviting Christ into their life, is there any reason why we shouldn't have a baptism right now? That's what Peter's saying. Let's just have a baptism. Let's just baptize them right now in the name of Christ because they are open and welcome. Did you know that everybody's welcome to the gospel? Did you know that? God may pour out His Holy Spirit on some strange people. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? I hope I never get over what you've done. I hope I never get over what you've done in my life. What you've done with others. What I've seen. What I've heard. What I've experienced. I hope you never ever. I hope I never get over it. You see, God moves in many ways, and revivals are sometimes hard to understand. You say, well, I, you know, you may not believe that, but even clergy don't agree what revival is. To be honest with you, I've heard it. You know where revival begins, people? It begins on our knees. Did you know that? It literally begins on our knees. Jesus tells the disciples to wait here until the Holy Spirit is poured out and they start praying. And God moves. That's pretty, that's pretty powerful stuff. They pray and they waited. How about you? Are you praying and waiting? You know, Thursday night was uh, praying for this country. Are you praying and waiting? Are you saying, oh God, pour out your spirit on this community? God, pour out your spirit on this country? I can't totally define what it looks like, and I can't even totally define what's happening to me, to be bluntly honest with you. But I know God is moving, and I know He wants to move in your lives. I know He wants to move in this church. I don't have the least bit inkling or doubt about it. I hope you never get over what God has done. Stay in revival, will you? It's something we do as individuals. And I preached a sermon, although I couldn't go back in my notes, I couldn't find out when I preached the letters to the churches. So evidently it wasn't on the church, wasn't on my new software, it was on the old software. I just want to read, read something that we've talked about before, just touch on it very lightly. But I have this against you, he's talking to the church in Ephesus, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. 
We need to be a people that hears this message. We need to hear the message. Repentance isn't a bad thing, people. It really isn't. When I repent of something, I'm admitting something to God that's probably sinful. Or I'm walking in the wrong direction. Or I'm not doing something right. And he wraps his loving arms around us. And he says, my child, I get it. Just come with me for a while. I'll show you what, what, what it should look like. And so this letter was written to the community so that they would remember. You see, because... We're either, when Christ comes back, there's two things we're either going to experience. We're either going to experience salvation or judgment. That's the truth. For all of us. But the beauty of the judgment to a faithful believer of Christ is that our sins have been forgiven. I'm not here to beat you up on judgment. That's not what I want to do today. I just want to remind you, I hope you never get over it what God is doing in your lives. I hope you stir up those gifts, turn up those embers, and let the fire burn brightly. Remember what it was like when you were first a believer, how excited you got? Now, I'm not talking about getting back to all that emotionally, but I'm saying turn up the flame so that you love people like you loved them then. That's what we're called to be about. Now I can run over the things I reminded you. I'm going to read them and just go quickly. And believe it or not, I'm going to let you go there. Okay? Isn't that nice? Wake up, some of you. I've already put you to sleep. <laughs> you can't catch a wave sitting on the beach. You're not going to catch the Holy Spirit that way. Look for places where God is moving. Jesus wants us all to become hot. <laughs> Sometimes we see the world and we're ready for the rapture, but God is asking for us to turn over space. As you know, sometimes we're willing to make space because in making space, we make it the way we want to make it. And it may not be the way God wants it made. And finally, I hope I never get over what you've done, God. I hope you never get over what God's done for you. Start that notebook. Start that notebook. I'm going to start adding that to my journal. Hope I'll get time to write other things, but I'm going to start adding that to my journal. God has so richly blessed my life. How about you? Come on. I had food this morning for breakfast. There are people in this country that don't even have that. And this church then, in, in a way of testimony, gets involved in feeding the poor, helping the needy. You do all those wonderful things. Praise God for you. Let's bow for prayer. Oh, gracious God, I thank you for all that you are and all that you do in this church. I pray that you would continue to bless this church. You would continue to use this church. And the furtherance of your kingdom would be experienced right here. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I want you to know that I chose hymns that I liked today. I'm sorry, I like Bill Gaither, believe it or not. I like contemporary music. I like Bill Gaither. I like old hymns. But I've really grown fond of one old hymn that's called I'll Fly Away. Can we stand and sing that as our closing hymn today?
Oh, gracious God, I thank you for all that you do. I thank you for all that you have done. And I thank you for all that you will do. And God, it is now time for me to give back the burden that you have given to me in this community. And I give it to the new pastor spiritually, if you will. I ask you to release me from this charge in that way. Although I will always carry them in my heart and I will always pray. But I pray that the burden now would be moved to the new pastor. I pray, God, that your grace and your strength would be upon us all. And your blessing would fill us as we continue to move in the way that you would have us to move. I ask it all in Jesus' name. You may be seated. The ushers will, will love. Okay? God bless you. Will the ushers come and dismiss our folks? Mm -hmm.